because this was the first time I was forced to live in a totally segregated system, situation. The first year that I was in Kansas City was the first year that they even allowed black people to use the library. Well, this was surprising to me because we did use the library in Sheridan and we used the library in Denver. However, I might say this about Denver. When I first came to Denver, this was the first time that I found that uh, blacks had to live in a certain section. It's called Five Points. Have you heard of Five Points? Well, five Points is in Northeast Denver. They call it Northeast Denver. And all the black people, for the most part, had to live in that section of Denver. So we went, they had three schools. The elementary school was Whittier Elementary, and the, the junior high was Cole, and Manuel was the high school. So I had some experience of what it meant to be uh, uh, Jim Crow, so to speak. When I went to Kansas City, this was the, the full bore. However, there was also breakthroughs. World War II opened up some kinds of um, relaxation of how blacks were treated in some areas. Because after all, the America had gone to war. Who did they fight in, in World War II? <coughs> Germany and Japan. Germany, Japan, and? Yes. Italy. Italy. Yeah. Well, what were, we, what were we fighting for? Why did they go there? Yes. Liberation. Pardon me? Liberation. Liberation. We're going to liberate all these people. But what's happening to black people in America? Jim Crow. They're not liberated. So when World War II is over, and then there begins to be some kind of modulation and awareness. And there's also another thing that's going on at the end of, uh, at, at, as a, a change because of World War II. Before the World War II, there were all these colonies that in Africa and Asia that were uh, dominated by European countries. And what is happening in Africa right now where you have these people out in the streets demanding their liberty and their rights, that's a general fallout from what happened as a result of the European imperialism in the Asia and the continent of Asia and Africa. These people were just not coming out. So anyway, so America then began to take a look at itself. But we were not really being as uh, human right sanctuaries as we said we were not supposed to be. Well, I stayed in, in um, Kansas City for two years, and then I came back to Colorado, and I got married. Martin Luther King, when he graduated from college, and incidentally, he finished high school when he was 15 years old. He was so smart. I didn't finish high school at 15. I was 17. It took me a while. So Martin Luther King then, when he went to do his college graduate work, he went north. When he went north, then he found out, and if you'll read some of his writings, what a shock it was to him to see that people of different colors mingle, that they had social relationships, and that black people had the right to vote, and they were being part of the political system. Well, he not only did he observed the society because he was going to be a preacher. He went there to be a preacher. And he got his PhD. And in the meantime, when he was doing all his study about philosophy and theology, he ran across a, a, a philosophy of nonviolence. And who was the man that was the architect of that nonviolence? And he 
Yes. Um, oh, um, I hear it. The wheels are turning. Mahatma Gandhi. Yes, Mahatma Gandhi. Yes. Very good. And Martin Luther King says, this sounds like a wonderful philosophy. You don't have to have violence to change the way people behave. <coughs> so when he kind of filed that away in, in his in his arsenal of, of uh, life, he came back to the South, this time as a preacher in Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. During the Civil War, the, the Confederacy had their first capital where? In Montgomery, Alabama. So this was a citadel of, of the Confederacy. And he had this church, it was called the uh, Ninth Street Baptist Church. It was just a block down if you've been to Montgomery. How many have been to Montgomery, Alabama? Anyone? Right down the street from Martin Luther King's church is the state capital. Because Montgomery is the state capital of Alabama. When he came back, the year before there had been a Supreme Court decision that said segregation was not legal anymore. And what was that that Supreme Court decision? Yes. No, 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 this is just allowed that to happen. Did you ever hear of the Brown decision? The Brown decision in 1954. Came out of Kansas, incidentally. While I was in Kansas, the Brown decision was going to the state, uh, US Supreme, I mean, the state Supreme Court in Kansas. It took another four years before it went to the US Supreme Court. Well, what happened then, <coughs> Martin Luther King and members of, the, of his community were tired of being discriminated against. And one day, there was a lady on the bus. Her name was? Marks. She had it up to here. What was the story? How'd that go? Yes, back there. What was the story about Rosa Parks? Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to the white man in the back of the bus. So then, okay. she did all great. Okay, so she said, I've got a right. What happened to her when she didn't give up her seat? Yeah. She got arrested. Well, this sent really waves through the black community. They had had it up to them. After all, we already thought the World War II was going to liberate all these people in Europe and everywhere. So the community was really riled. And what came out of this, this refusal of um, Rosa Parks to give up her seat? What happened? Yes. The Montgomery bus boycott? Yes, the Montgomery bus boycott. And how long did it last? Yes. How many? Two months. Almost a whole year. <coughs> what do black people do? What does a boycott mean anyway? Number one. They, they refuse to ride the bus. They refuse to ride the bus. They walked and they had cabs. People, and some of the ladies that they worked for even picked them up and took them to work. So, Martin Luther King, he said, oh my gosh, this is just remarkable that people have that resilience and resolve to say that we are not going to take it anymore. We're not taking it anymore. So then what resulted by the success of the boycott? Martin Luther King began to do, do what? Yes, March. began to organize an assault to get rid of Jim Crow and slavery. 
What were some of the places he went to? Yeah, Washington, D.C. Uh, no. He didn't start in Washington, D.C. Where did he? Where's the one that they bombed the church and killed those girls? Birmingham, Alabama. Selma, Alabama. And then what other kinds of things spurred? What happened in Little Rock, Arkansas? Yes. Uh, they blew up in his house? Not Little Rock. They did blow up his, his house, the back of his house in uh, in Montgomery, yes. Almost killed his family. Yes. Um, the National Guard was called in to escort um, black children into immigration. And how many were there? Nine. Here you, you got nine black kids, and here's a school, two thousand kids. It's going to make that big difference. But it was a change of the culture. This was a vibe. This was the first time then that there was a move to try to integrate the schools. Well, the Brown, the Brown decision said that separate but equal schools were detrimental to the society as well as to black people. So integrating the schools is one of the big part of it. And Central High in Little Rock, Arkansas, was is the well known one. How did some of these uh, people retaliate in these communities against Integration. How did they react? What went on in some of those places? Yes. Oh, well, I know that they had a lot of sit-ins, which is where you sat down, and it was around by the cast where you would wait and everything. And I mean, you knew all kinds of, I, I forgot what it was, but it was a sitting there to get um, people away from sitting in, inside their cafes or something that wouldn't serve to like not do good stuff. And then that's all they did. Good. Yeah, there was a, a young young group of uh, college students in North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, and they did a sit-in. That was one of the techniques. Sit-ins, well, other kind of techniques. Besides boycotts, sit-ins. Pardon? Marches. Marches, yes. Some people even did kneelings. They went to churches. And pray. And what did some of the, the sheriffs and the police do to try to prevent them? Yeah. Beat them. What else did they use? Yes. Dogs. Dogs. Yeah. You see, remember those pictures of the dogs after them? What else? Uh, uh, fire hose? Fire hoses. Can you imagine pressure and washing you down the street? Yes. Mace? I don't know about mace. I don't know about mace. Maybe it hadn't been invented. <laughs> but the problem is possible. They did use smoke bombs. They did. All kinds of ways to prevent. And what was the mission of the of the uh, action? It was to be what? Nonviolent. 